If you've been following along here on the channel, I'm working on adding a JL Audio C7 tweeter and three and a half inch mid-range that is part of a front three-way component set to the dash of this Jeep Wrangler. And up until now, I was planning on using these laser cut pieces of acrylic along with a bunch of fiberglass to mold these to the dash. But then one of you guys mentioned, Mark, why don't you 3D print the pod. After reading that comment, I could not get that idea out of my head, so thanks a lot for that. So in this video, I'm going to cover some of the advantages of 3D printing this pod versus my previous plan, and I'm going to take you through the design process, and we're going to get this pod ready for finishing. Now before we get into it, I do want to take a quick second to tell you guys about monthly channel sponsor, Crutchfield. When you're doing a car audio install, maybe you don't want to do a bunch of custom modification, so how do you know exactly what will fit the vehicle speaker size-wise, and how do you know if there are parts available in order to install all those speakers. With Crutchfield's vehicle selector tool, you enter the year, make, and model, and you can quickly see what speakers and other gear will fit for your application. Crutchfield has done a ton of research to make the installation process a lot more simple. If you guys want to learn more and take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans, check out the link here on screen or down in the video description. Now we're obviously skipping ahead a little bit as this is the 3D printed pod fresh off the printer, but I do want to discuss with you guys why I decided that this is a better solution than using my previous pieces that I was going to fiberglass. These are the previous pieces. I had an outside trim ring, I had an insert, and then I had the base plate. One of the main challenges I was coming across with this plate is that the tweeter itself it has a mounting depth of about three quarters of an inch. And since the mid-range can really only be in this location because obviously it's deeper, we need to have some clearance for the tweeter and I don't wanna have to drill a hole in the dash. I don't wanna have to change anything factory about the vehicle. So what that meant is that in order to have enough clearance for this plate, it would have to sit up about this high. Now there's nothing wrong with this, so this is definitely doable, but the challenge becomes my plan was to fiberglass mold the bottom of this to get all of this shape here, but then I would have to somehow add shape that transitions from that fiberglass shell on the top of the dash to where this is sitting here. The way to do that would be to stretch some material up to this and to fiberglass that and then add body filler or just fill it with a ton of body filler here. It would have required a lot of sanding, a lot of body working to really get everything looking the way we want it to. Again, definitely doable, but it would have taken quite a bit of time to get it the way I wanted to. Now, if you've been following along with the build series and you wanted to use that technique, I do have a related video that I use this similar technique in making some speaker pods on A-pillars in the past. But now, rather than doing all that body work, I was able to use my 3D design experience and design this for 3D printing, which gives me these perfectly shaped edges, I have perfect roundovers on each of these edges. And now all I'll need to do is just some very light skim coats of body filler just to fill up the lines of the 3D printer and sand these nice and smooth in preparation for upholstery. Before we get to that stage though, I do wanna go back in time and show you guys the design process so that you fully understand how we got to this point of having that 3D printed pod. All right guys, so here is our pod right here. And this did take a little bit of time to model. There's actually four different components here. There's the main pod body itself. Then there's also a mounting bracket down below. And then we have what I call a tapping plate that we'll be using to tap into to hold the mid-range speaker in. The tweeter itself will be press fit in. And then we have our speaker grill. I started this whole process with taking a picture of the factory speaker grill and then carefully outlining it in order to capture that shape here in the CAD program. Once I had that shape, it was easy to build off this by adding in the actual physical size of the mid-range speaker, the inside and outside, as well as the tweeter. And then I did some offset lines inside of our original profile off of that factory speaker grill. This allows me to define the geometry of the new speaker grill that will go over this pod, as well as exactly where the speaker need to line up. The pod has a good thickness from this surface to this surface and what the reasoning of that is is to allow for the tweeter to be completely flush with the bottom of this here that way it's not going to hit our actual dash that this sits upon. If we take a look at a cross section here you can see that the sides of the pod do slope in and then there's a slight radius here at the top. That sloping in feature does give this pod some shape. It's still fairly blocky, and I did that on purpose because, after all, this is a Jeep Wrangler. The interior of them have a lot of hard lines and kind of blocky edges. 
So this is gonna match nice with the original design of the vehicle. And it also allows for proper clearance between the A-pillar on this side and the windshield on this side. The speakers will mount on this face here, which is sunk down in. And the reasoning for that being sunk down in is because on this face right here, we're going to have a speaker grill. And that way when the speaker moves, it's not gonna hit that grill and there's plenty of clearance as well for the tweeter. The mid-range speaker is held in on these four holes and there's another part that I'm gonna cut on the laser back behind here you can see it right here this is a tapping plate that will be drilled and tapped on this hole here that way you can have the fastener go through the speaker through this through hole in the pod and then sandwich everything together and tighten into the tapping plate these two countersunk holes here and here will allow a fastener to go down in which will pick up on my mounting bracket which will bolt into the vehicle and between the tweeter and the mid we have this little channel right here the reason for that is it allows clearance for the wiring the speaker wiring for the tweeter to pass through that because remember this surface here directly contacts the dash so we have to have some clearance for that wire to come down through and both of our speaker wires come up through the factory mid location in this spot this here is the speaker grill, and this is just the basic shape of it. I'll be adding a mesh style shape on the inside here to actually protect the speaker fully along with the tweeter. But you can see that the shape of it is designed to allow for clearance for the speakers to actually fire through each of these locations with this main arm going across, adding some strength to the grill itself. Once I finalized the design of the pod, I exported as an STL file and I brought it into my 3D printing software here. You can see this program gives us a representation of the build plate on the 3D printer. And what we can do is we can define a ton of different process parameters and settings. And once we define all those settings, we can see exactly what the printer is going to do layer by layer. What's unique about anytime you're making something for on the inside of a vehicle, you have to remember that that material needs to be able to handle a ton of temperature, especially up on the dash. It's gonna have the sun beating down on it all day. You don't wanna use PLA, which is a normal 3D printing material that's very easy to print with. You don't wanna use that material because it can soften and deform and it's just gonna to lead to a mess. You wanna use a material like ABS or another high temperature material, but the challenge with printing with a material like ABS is getting it to properly stick to the build platform. It has a tendency to want to warp as it does shrink a little bit as it cools. So in order to get good adhesion to the build platform, what we're going to do is use this process here. This is called a raft in 3D printing. And a raft is gonna do these really thick fat lines that really stick to the build platform well. And then it's going to build a couple of solid layers on top of that before it then moves up just a little bit more for the first layer of our actual part. By raising up just a little bit more from this green layer that you see here to this blue layer that you see here, it allows those parts to be separated once the component is completely finished. So we can start stepping up through our layers here. And the other thing that you're gonna see in this location here, see these kind of green lines diagonally going across here that seem kind of random? That is what's called support material. The reason for the support material is to act as sort of a support for any bridging that is going to occur above it. So if you remember, we have this little channel for the speaker wires between the tweeter and the mid, and this has essentially a bridge over it. So because this is an additive manufacturing process, if you think about it, if we didn't have that support material there, when we did this first layer on top of that, this material would have a tendency to droop down and it wouldn't look like it should. It wouldn't allow you to form the part like it should. So by adding in this temporary support material, it can in fact print on top of it. The reason all the support material is in this area here is as we step up through the layers, we'll get to a layer eventually right here that that is where we're going to have our tapping plate come in from the back side. We'll keep stepping up through the layers and then you can see our first layer here of the surface that the speakers actually mount to. Then we can go all the way back up to the top. 
So this looks good to go. I'm gonna export the G code, which is what the machine can read and it tells the machine what to do. And we're gonna get started with our printing. With ABS prints, here's that strange first layer of the raft that I was telling you guys about. You can see that it's really laying the plastic on there really, really thick. That way we get good adhesion to the bed because ABS definitely likes to warp. And I also make sure that I set the bed temperature really high. We're currently at 95 degrees Celsius. We're going to let the printer do its thing we have another six and a half hours to go we're about halfway through the print right now and i did want to give you guys a view of this just so you can get an idea how that support material works if you look on the inside here of the larger speaker hole you can see all those lines going back and forth that's a support material that we will break out and that material is there to support the lip that will be sitting up above it that we're going to be using to mount the tapping plate from the back side. Also, now that we're printing, let's talk a little bit about the raft that I added around the part. This here is the first version of my part that I printed to check a bunch of fit and tolerances. And you can see if you look at the edge right here, that it lifted off of the build plate. It actually warped as it moved up. It's warped there, it's warped in this corner here, and also in this front corner. Now this isn't a huge deal. As the printer does build up, it tends to stay nice and flat. The top of the part is nice and flat, but still, if we're going for perfection and we want this to sit nice and flat on the dash, we wanna fix that issue. So that issue is what the raft really helps solve, especially when we're printing with ABS materials because ABS has a lot higher heat resistance, which is great for being in a vehicle, but unfortunately it has a tendency to shrink more as it cools, which can lead to it popping off the platform. Here is our part fresh off the printer. You can see that that raft is still attached and it can be easily separated. So we need to remove that along with all the support material. Like I said, with the right printer settings, this is pretty easy to remove. We can just separate it by hand. In order to mount the mid-range speaker into the pod, I made those holes oversized. So our fasteners that go through the speaker are going to just go through these through holes. And then I'm going to drill and tap this tapping plate that can load in from the back of the pod. This is kind of just a different way to do things. Rather than using a heat set insert that goes into the material, we can use this tapping plate. And really the main reason I'm doing it is I have to use number six fasteners in order to fit through this hole. And I don't have any 632 tapped heat set inserts. So we're just going with the tapping plate. If you didn't have a laser, you could use traditional techniques on the router in order to make this ring. And then you could just drill your holes using a drill and tap set. But in my case, I like to do it on the laser. That way I know the hole spacing is perfect, exactly where it needs to be to match up with the speaker. And what I do is I just cut that hole to this normal drill size. Here's a good tip when taking the protective paper off of the rings, you can use some duct tape. This is especially handy when you're doing pieces that have a bunch of cuts in them. It makes it a lot easier to remove those smaller parts of the backing paper. Since the fasteners I'm using are 632, I've picked that tap and I've loaded it into my drill here. We'll add a little bit of WD-40 to the tap for lubrication and we're going to tap these holes. Now that the acrylic is tapped, we can put our machine fastener into it like so. Now, if you're wondering why should I tap the tapping plate, but I can't just do the same and tap this. Remember that with 3D printing, this is a bunch of lines essentially kind of glued together and that it's not always nice and solid. It's not solid enough for us to just tap into it. It's a much more solid solution to tap into acrylic. We've got the speakers mounted. In order to mount the pod into the vehicle, I've created this adapter plate. And much like the other piece that I 3D printed, this also has a raft on it in order to avoid that distortion on the bottom layer so we can separate that. And this bolts in using a factory bolt location, which can then tie to these two locations 
on the pod. To attach the pod to this, in this case, I am going to be using these heat set inserts. To set these in, I use a soldering iron, and they do make a special soldering tip to set these down in that I don't have. I'd like to get that eventually, but for the meantime, we can just heat them up carefully with the edge of the tip, and then we can press them in using a flat piece of metal. The next thing we need is we need to create a grill of sorts in order to protect the speakers, and I'm going for the stealth look on this, so I don't want the speakers to be quite so obvious, so I want it to closely match the OEM design. The grill is part of the tweeter and it's nice and low profile, so we're gonna leave that as is, but if you're wondering why we're not using the grill that comes with the three and a half inch C7 mid, it's just enough large that it kind of got in the way of what I needed to do as far as the geometry of all of this to match the OEM design. So just to have a little bit more clearance, I'm gonna leave it out. It would be redundant to have two grills on this anyhow. So in the meantime, what I came up with is this. Now this is an eighth inch piece of black acrylic and I've painted the top side of it here a matte black. The reason for that is I don't want it reflecting the sun up into your eyes. You can see that the glossy acrylic is pretty reflective there. So by adding that matte finish, nowhere near is reflective, but you'll also notice this pattern. I did cut this on the laser after designing it, but if you look closely at the shape of the grill pattern here, you'll notice that it matches the OEM look. It is just slightly larger than the factory holes. I did that on purpose to give myself a little bit more open area for the sound to come through. But over here in the vehicle, this is the glove box, and then this is the speaker that is inside the dash, and you can see this also has that same grill look. So by keeping it the same, we'll give it more of that OEM feel. Now when I designed the pod, I added this little pocket here on purpose, like we talked about earlier, that allows this to sit down in. And if you're wondering why it has a sloppy fit in there right now, that's because I know that I'm gonna be wrapping this pod with upholstery materials. I'm gonna be using a vinyl that will come up around and around that edge and tuck down in. But if we did not allow for that clearance, this would never be able to possibly get back in. So if we do a quick test fit, you can see this is how it looks up in the dash. We'll of course repeat all those steps over on the other side of the vehicle, but I'm really liking the look of this and we're ready to move forward. Now, in case you guys didn't know, I post behind the scenes content and updates on Instagram. I'd love to have you as a follower there. And in the next video, I'm gonna be wrapping these up and getting them fully installed. So if you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Next time you're doing a car audio install and you need to determine what will fit in your vehicle, definitely check out show sponsor Crutchfield. You can learn more at the link here on screen or down in the video description. A special thanks to them, along with Bart, Mike, Ali, Francis, Jerry, Marcos, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to all you guys for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching.